Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of Reinvented, and thank you Matthew for being on the show. Without further ado, Matthew Rollins, everyone. You know, it's funny, I think you're in Gresham, aren't you? I am in Gresham. <clears throat> that is so funny, because I'm uh, I'm here in, in Southeast Portland. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm from Southeast, or mostly from Southeast Portland, yeah. Okay, awesome, that's so cool. So... Um, I'm pumped to, to do the show. I'll I'll uh, I'll defer to you on how we proceed. All right. So I usually ask like questions. Um, just okay. kind of some. I always say random questions. Love it. Um, just kind of talking about you and like you behind. So. I love it. So yeah. Okay. So first question: What what is one thing you would never change in yourself? One thing I would never change in myself is. I think how much I, I love people, maybe that sounds, uh, maybe that sounds kind of cliche or mushy, but, um, it's, you know, when you love someone, it, it, uh, it opens you up to being hurt, but I think that it's, that's the human experience. So I wouldn't change that. I, that I love people a lot. I like to go, I like to go all in when I care for someone. Yeah, I, I feel like the same. I've been, especially within the last four-ish weeks, I've been pretty hurt by people I know. So it's been it's been rough. But like I even even after it's it gets pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, it's so real. It's so real that that it, sometimes it's like, oh, I wish I could just turn this off. I wish I could just not not feel anything. And it's like, ah, yeah, that's kind of that's love is to to open yourself up to being being hurt um yeah all right let's see what would you well what would you wish to know five years ago Hmm. that's a good question what do i wish i knew five years ago so i'm 35 now i was 30 five years ago would have been 2018 i think um that's a good question. I think I just, can I back it up even further? It doesn't have to be five years. You, you could back it up further. I, I hate these type of questions like five years ago. I don't, I don't know what I was doing five years ago. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> all right, well, I'll back it. I'll back it up all the way. Cause I would say, why don't we, why don't we just say like 20 years ago? I would, that's when I was 15 sophomore in co- uh, high school. I would say when I was, when I was 15, if I could go back and visit my past self, from, you know, from the future, uh, I would tell myself, Hey, it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. Don't there's one of my favorite quotes is from the best exotic marigold hotel. And it says in the end, it will all be okay. And if it is not yet, okay, it is not yet the end. And that's what I'll tell myself. Yeah. I think even, even five years ago for myself too, I think telling myself like, it's going to be okay, like, in any situation. Because especially at that time, I was definitely not in a my state of, like, I just, like, always had thinking people were out to get me and, you know, all that. And that was something I definitely. Totally. So. Yeah. I, I 100%. I think because that's what we always need to know, right, is, like, hey, it's going to it's gonna work out. It's going to, like, things things work out, you know, your life. Your life doesn't suck forever. <laughs> All right, let's see. a little more positive note. What's the funniest story in your life? Oh man, this is good. This is good. Okay, what's the funniest story? Well, here's a the first thing that comes to mind. So when I was uh, in high school, probably freshman, I did something called I think they call it like youth and gov, youth and government. And so I lived in Wisconsin, and so we basically it would be like it would be a mock government session, and so we would elect people from all over the state would come, uh, high schoolers, and you would, you would elect a governor and senators and, and then you would, um, you would go to the state capitol and you would practice writing laws and bills and all that. So anyways, I was in uh, Madison, Wisconsin at the capitol with our delegation of, of high, high school students. And there was like a mixer after one of the sessions in one of the days. And I, I was like walking around and meet, meeting people. And I met one of the like director ladies that was in charge of everything. And uh, I was like, Oh, like she was really nice to me. Like she was really kind. That was, that was cool. And so I'm like socializing with all these people. I don't like, I don't really know anyone. Right. And, and so 
uh, at the end of the night, I'm like walking out. Uh, oh, and I had I had gone to the bathroom at one point, come back in. Uh, and I, I, so at the end of the night, I'm walking out with a couple of my uh, my buddies and I look down and there's a huge string of toilet paper. Uh, I, I was it? I think it was hanging out of my pants, uh, like like a tail. And I was like, what the heck, guys? Like, why didn't you say anything? And they're like, we thought you knew. And I was like, you thought I knew? Like, you thought I was just walking around as an awkward, insecure freshman. You thought I was just walking around this thing with toilet paper hanging out of my pants. And they're like, yeah. So what had happened was, I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I'm going to jump off a one-story building. Uh, so what I thought, what, what happened was, I went to the bathroom and I lined, it's all like TMI. I lined the toilet, the, the seat, you know, cause it was like, I don't know this place. So I lined the seat with toilet paper. Well, when I got up from doing my business, I pulled that clean line of toilet paper onto my pants and it stuck and I had this like whole tail. And it was like, I was mortified. But looking back, I'm like, that's kind of funny. I, I imagine the director lady was like, oh, this poor dumb freshman that's like walking around with toilet paper hanging out. I'm gonna, so I was like, that's why she was so nice to me, so. That's my funny story. Yeah, I used to do that a lot as a kid. Like, I used to actually, actually have like toilet paper just hanging out. And I would, I had a teacher one time tell me they're like, I don't know if you know this, but it's hanging out of your pants. I was like, that's embarrassing. I was like, and then I had to walk back in my classroom, like, nothing happened. So <laughs> I've, I've done that quite a few times. Oh, man. Oh, man. So good. So good. All right. What is something you wish you could erase from your memory forever? Mm. If you have something. Cause... Yeah. Yeah. If I could erase something from that's that's a, that's like a superpower memory erasing <laughs> like something out of men in black, man, if I could erase something from my memory, I think if I could erase from my memory, all of the, all of the negative mental associations with failure, I think I would do that. Because I think like, you just gotta go for it in life. You gotta, you gotta go big. You gotta take your, take your shot. Uh, as Eminem would say, you only get one shot. And so I think, I think in my mind, as I'm going along in life, right, I, I take risks and, I, and then you fail. And then there's like these compounded negative things like, oh, I messed up last time and I, I sucked and I failed. So. I got to erase from my memory all the all the negative experiences with failure to just keep charging. That's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the same. Like, I would, like, I mean, I know there's like a lot of like things people are like, oh, I'd erase this because that was, you know, like embarrassing. But sometimes, like, coming from like a work standpoint, it makes some of the best like material. I'm um, yeah. like, also, like, yeah, I've, I've failed, but like, I'm, I'm not going to continue to be negative about it. So that's, I, that's how, kind of how I've switched my like perspective on, mm. on life. Cause I'm like, I used to like fail and I'm like, Oh, I'm never going to do anything. That's like, that's not really, that's not what happened. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Failure is, is good. It's like, it's just the negative associations that we combine with failure, but otherwise failure makes us stronger, gives us opportunity to grow. So yeah. All right. What is what is one thing your morning can't start without? Mm. You know, I've been doing this power drink uh, for over a year now, and that is my that is how my morning gets going. I do I do coffee or decaf, and then I'll mix in like coconut milk, and then I'll I'll put in MCT oil, which is like medium chain triglyceride medium chain triglyceride oil. So it's like brain fuel. And then I will put in like 30 grams of collagen protein. And that is like a meal, but it's just, it's like a power charged meal. And that's how I get this day going. Yeah. I, I kind of do the same thing, except I usually start with like a protein shake because I can't drink, I can't have really anything solid in the morning or it really messes up my day because my stomach and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, I always tell people one thing I definitely can't start my day without is my coffee. Yes. Yes. I, I need coffee to function. <laughs> like I don't put any protein in it, but I like to like, you know, make my own coffee. Like not so much like go to Starbucks or anything like that, but like start my own day with making my own coffee is something I like. I'm like, I'm like, I need that. Just because it, 
Especially when I start working. It's something you definitely something you definitely need. One hundred percent. Yeah, get that get those brain cells firing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. What's your formula for healing up challenging situations? What's my formula for healing up challenging situations? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think it, it depends on the situation because there's there's a number of of there's a number of like contexts of challenging situations that require different things. But I'll say, for an example, um, if we're talking about relationships on a personal level, uh, the way that I approach that when let's say that oh someone that I love really hurts me, my I wouldn't say formula, but we could say say formula. Like my my approach to that is uh, one. Uh, if if trust has been broken, then there's there's a process of restoring trust that doesn't have anything to do with how much I love this person. So my my process for healing from when when a family member or someone I care about hurts me is one. Uh, so trust has been broken. So we've got to we've we've lost trust. So we've got to redefine boundaries. So for me, then a lot of times it's like, hey. I'm, I'm redefining the boundaries we have, not because I don't love you, but because you're not as safe as you once were. So trust is broken. We redefine boundaries. And then uh, I, I work towards forgiving them and, and releasing them from any like bitterness or um, anger that I have. And then I work towards restoring trust if that's possible. So I would say that's kind of like the process that I go through uh, with someone. I don't know what yeah. you think. What's your yeah, I would say the same thing, especially like within the last month of of any, I don't know, like I would say it's a very stressful time in my life, but like mm. I always tell people don't don't react like right away because mm. like you could be angry, you could be hurt and you're not like in that logical state of like thinking like this is what I should do next. I'm, I'm definitely a what started out as going from one thing is now something a little bit different. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it, I think more of it has to do with just kind of moving on, even though you're hurt mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the day is still going to go by regardless if, if, you know, you're talking to them or not. 100%. And you, you said, you, you said you really try not to react, right? I try not to react like if if it comes up like maybe an argument like you know there's the reaction in that which obviously I think could still be worked on but like yeah reacting to like okay what am I going to do next and now yeah. I would say don't do it like right then and there because I think that's so wise that's like not you know and I I feel like you're just not in that state of like okay this is what I sh should do mm -hmm something that's like you got to work towards yeah that, i think that's so wise that uh i was watching and was i watching a video on this but i was i was watching someone teach this and they were talking about like you are not your experiences and you're not even your thoughts or emotions there's a gap and so you have an experience and then you have a reaction and what we want to do is is create a gap there where you get to decide and choose how you respond so yeah, I think I'm right with you. I think there's a lot of wisdom in just taking a taking a quick pause before you react. You know, I like I always make a joke to people too, like, like yeah, you, like cry about it, but like, but like move on, mm -hmm. like after, like cry for a little bit and then and then react. Yeah, because I love way you let your feelings out, and I always make that joke. People are like, no, I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's that's what that's what I tell people. That's how I make people laugh. I love it. That's and that's smart too. All right. Would you choose a safe and boring life over an adventurous but risky one? Adventurous and risky, ride or die. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like sometimes being safe, you're not gonna. That's, I always tell people, I'm like, yep, yeah, I would. I'm like, yeah, you can be safe, but how about be risky? <laughs> Pays off more. Can I ask you? Can I uh, ask you a question, or or is um, yeah. I don't want to mess with your flow? No, you're good. You can ask a question. Cool. Okay, cool. So here's my question because you're bringing up some good questions. Um, my question is, what is one thing 
uh, as you're looking at your life that you're like, I really want to do this thing, but it falls in the adventurous and risky category. Hit me with one. Mm, you know, like I'm going to take it kind of from a career standpoint, but like I would say definitely there's there's a lot of things I want to. And I, I people always tell me they're like, oh, you do too much. I mean, yeah, they're probably not wrong, but um, like I've recently done been getting into like some passions I had back in high school. Mm. Like I wanted to do, I did theater in high school, which I hated theater. Like I, it was not a fun class for me. I'm, I'm very socially awkward. Like I, I, you know, for like business meetings and stuff, I can, I can talk, but like I couldn't at that time I could not do a thing, but I've definitely done more like, you know, like I'm, I'm a comedian. So I've done like I've done more open mics and I, and in high school, I definitely was not that person. I had stage fright. Yeah. Or at least I thought I did. I'm like, maybe it's because I changed my perspective and was like, okay, well, it's just me, you know, me being me. I'm the only person who can judge me and actually care. But I was like, so I've done a lot more, like, I think just putting myself out there more. Mm. I love that. So give me one. What's something like, it could be career where you're, if it was like, okay, this is risky. This is in the risky and adventurous category, but this is something in my life that I'm like, okay, if I, if I had all the courage in the world, I knew I couldn't fail. I knew I could go for it. This is one risky adventurous thing that I would go after. I mean, I guess one thing I did do, and I don't, I don't know why I did it. And I, I people don't seem to understand this. Cause like I post a lot of it on social media too. So and social media brings you to a lot of hate, but for some reason I was scrolling on Facebook one day Yeah. And, um, well, out here in Portland, we have Portland's Funniest for Helium Comedy Club. Okay. And I was scrolling on Facebook, and I saw it, and I was like, you know, that sounds fun. I'm going to do that. I paid, like, $25 to register. And I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna go stand on, st- on stage in front of people. I don't know and do this. When, at the time, when I did this, I had never done an open mic. I had never, like, been on stage in front of anyone by myself. I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it. And it, it is something that's so hard to tell yourself, like, to go on stage in front of people, like, that mental, like, block. Mm-hmm. You're like, people are going to judge me. Mm-hmm. But, like, I remember my first open mic, I had, like, a little bit of, like, some problems. Like, it wasn't bad, but I don't remember it <laughs> for a few different reasons. And it wasn't because, like, anxiety, stuff like that. But, like... I definitely think putting myself out there, like going, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do something totally random. And like my, my parents, or at least my dad had always told me, he goes, you always do something like just, and you go for it. And I said, yeah, I'm like, I don't see why I can't. Like, What's the worst that's going to happen? I love that. That is, I mean, that is, you talk about, I mean, I think most people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of death. So most people would rather die than public speak. So that is, that's yeah. a big courage there. That's a major curse. So pro- like my, if I had a hat, I would take it off and say, I salute you. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a lot more people than an open mic. So, but working on the material for it, I'm like, I remember first starting working on the material and I was not liking it at all because it didn't sound like me. And especially yeah. coming back from writing, like if you got to write material, Yeah, it, it's been like, it's been hard and I'm like and then I started writing material that more sounded like myself because I thought of the first open mic I did like a funny story and it was it didn't go too bad but it didn't go too great either so I kind of I I always say I bombed but I feel like that's what you do at an open mic you got it that's 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 what I I've been told so (laughs) that's that's what I tell people that's awesome I'm impressed I, you have you have my respect, so. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Do you love your future or past more? See, I think I love my future more. Yeah, I, w- I would say the same thing. I mean, there's always something to be expected. And even like my past self, I was like, mm, I don't know if I'd ever want to do that again. Yeah. All right. If you could change one thing in the world, what would that be? Hmm. If I could change one thing in the world, what would that be? I think 
If I could wave, if I could wave a wand and I could, if I could wave a wand and I could help everyone, everyone be like 10 times more courageous to go after their, their unique genius, their God-given gift, that's, that's what I do. Because I think the world, and make people more, like if I could, if I could wave a wand and that would help people lead with love and lead with courage and go, just go for it. I think the world would be a better place because I think everyone has this unique genius, this unique gift for planet earth. And I think a lot of times, like you said earlier in one of the questions, like we, we hold ourselves back because of fear uh, and we hold ourselves back because of what ifs. And uh, I think when people really go for it in life, when they really take risks and offer, offer their genius to the world, I think really cool things happen. Yeah, I think even like people with me when I like for at least my my comedy jokes, like I I tend to go more like on on my mental health because sometimes like I definitely had like a hard part of like almost being booked into a mental hospital. I was on people are always like, well, you don't want to joke on mental health. I said, but I'm joking on mine. I'm not joking about other people saying like, oh, you know, this. I'm like, no, I'm joking about mine. I'm like my experiences. I'm like. And for starters, I'm like, if you really knew what that was like and being diagnosed with that, I think you'd understand where I'm coming from. I said, because yep. I'm, I'm not the only one with these stories. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not the only yeah, one who's, who's, ha- who's pretty much hit rock bottom. I was like, I'm not the only one. Yeah, I've been there. I, I think, I mean, depression and anxiety are only on the rise in the U.S. and the Western world, so... You're right. I think a lot of people relate to it. All right. Did did you change much from what you were a year ago? <clears throat> it's an accountability session now. How much did I grow? <clears throat> this is a good question. Uh, no, let me think. So a year ago would have been <clears throat> the summer of 2022. Did I change much? I would say in the last, since April... Uh, since April, I've really been of this year. I've really been turning up the heat in my own life in a good way. I've been feeling a good sense of urgency. I joined a, um, I hired a business coach, and so I've been in this high level uh, coaching program and working on growing my business. Uh, so I've been just reading books and studying and really working to to build my my business and my YouTube shows. So uh, I would say, I would say I've really, yeah, turned up the, that sense of that positive sense of urgency in the last uh, two, three months. So that's been good. And also for when people do watch this, what's your YouTube show called? Mm, it is called, so the YouTube show is called The Good Life. And really though, the, the, um, the handle is just Matthew Rollins. So it's, it's like, if you throw in people's handles, it's just uh, at Matthew Rollins 503. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you know yeah, yeah, no, that's it. I love the plug. And do you do do you do you produce this as a video and uh, like uh, video? Uh, and I audio tend or? to do it as a video, just when for Spotify. Like it's a little bit, it's yeah. easier just to kind of back it up and like mm. download it as a video. It lets me do it as an audio, but it's like an extra step, and it's like that's more than I want to do. Because like I do yeah. it from my computer, because my tablet with what I record on, because it has better audio. It doesn't like it won't show me like recordings. Which is kind of annoying because, okay. like, my computer's a little a little slow. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, people are people are probably gonna be like, "Well, that's lazy." It, it, it might be, but I also I work okay. a lot too. So, like, if I can make my life just that much simpler, I'm gonna do it. Preach it. All right. What's your life motto? My life motto. This is great. This is great. Um, these are good questions. What's my life motto? I would say love deeply, go for it with all you've got, and no regrets. Yeah. Yeah, I believe in, in loving with all loving with all your heart people the people that god's given you i believe in just going for it just just taking my shot taking big risks just 
failing forward and then doing the best I can to live without regrets. Like I want to get, I want to be a hundred years old and like, you know what? I went for it. I went all out. I, I, don't, I don't regret living a small life. So. Yeah. I think I used to tell people when I was younger, like, cause I would wear mismatching socks all the time. Cause I was too lazy to find the matching sock. But I go, life's too short for matching socks because I was like, it's, it's okay to be unique. I was like, and my, my grandparents definitely love that. <laughs> It would be laughing. I was like, well, it's true. It's too short to think about what I'm wearing. All yeah, right. Well, what would you never do, no matter the rewards? What would I never do, no matter the reward? You know, I to keep to be sane and to have like to be okay with being me. I I do the best that I can to withhold, uh, to hold up my own integrity. And, and so I, there's, if I had to do things, if someone offered me, you know, any amount of money to, to do things that I knew I would, I wouldn't be able to live with myself or, and it doesn't have to be even like crazy things, but just things where I'm like, you know, that just, I can't, that's not who I am. I'm not going to do that thing that's a lie so i think i just things that are like man that's just that's just wrong i don't believe in you know i'm in sales as well and so you know you, it's easy to just you can sell anything right but so i think things that things that would hurt people things that would um in my conscience or in my integrity I'd be like that's just that's not right that's not true i just i'm not going to do that because i gotta go home and um i gotta go home and sleep at night with my conscience and and, uh, you know, I've, I've been through those times where you're kind of tortured in your mind of like, oh, man. So I'm like, there's nothing, there's no price I'd pay for inner peace. Yeah, I think even like, because I also work in like the service industry. So I even think like, sometimes like people are like, like they'll send back something and they'll be like, this doesn't taste good. And I'm like, let me show you my way of doing it because I know I'm like the recipe what it shows for is kind of. I'm like, isn't my favorite? I'm like, I can't blame you. But I can't say that, obviously. Y yet there's some things you just can't say. I'm like, let me show you my way. I'm like, I'm going to give it to you my way because I think it tastes better. I'm like, but even like, I will say working in the service industry, people, you are so expected to like, you know, work all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, and it's something you don't enjoy. I'm like, I enjoy doing that I'm like I didn't want to overwork myself so like when I moved on to my next service job I was like I took like I took a pay cut but more of like from a point of okay th at least they're willing to work with me a little bit here and not make me work like 14 hour shifts almost every day or you know like from open to close I'm like I don't want to do that so it's definitely something that's like don't overwork yourself for something that just doesn't serve a purpose. Oh man, that's I'm 100%. I'm with you. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta rest and take care of yourself. Sustainability. Uh, what's one thing that you will continue doing no matter what? One thing I'll continue doing no matter what, I think I'm just going to keep taking my shot no matter what, no matter how many times I fail, no matter how many times I, uh, the, the business or the project that I'm working on doesn't work. I'm just going to keep getting back up and taking my shot. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think today, like I was, I was like on Twitter and I don't use Twitter very much because it's, mm -hmm. I, I've never been good at Twitter. I, I, people are like, Oh, well you're young. I'm like, don't, that doesn't mean I'm good at it. I don't know how to social media. Apparently I was at least Twitter, but I was on Twitter and like, I don't know if you've seen this, but, you know, the comedian Matt Reif has sold out so many, like, of his shows. And he just released a new tour. And he, well, he made a tweet about, like, you know, like, um, you know, people were still hating on him because, like, Ticketmaster, stuff like that. And I said, well, that means you're successful because people are, are mad and you have haters. I'm like, that, I'm like, and that's something I'm like keep doing it keep keep making people mad i'm like yeah, yeah. successful. yeah no it's true if you're not 
if you're not if you're not angering somebody, if someone's not throwing throwing shade at you, then you're not you're not taking a big enough risk because when you start when you start becoming successful, someone's gonna hate you for it. Oh yeah. All right. I feel like this question can kind of go anywhere. Are you happy? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question. I, you know, I think I'm someone that like wants a lot from life. And so I like, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm a like visionary futurist dreamer of like the life that I want to live. And so I would say, and then I'll answer it just like simply, but I think, so I think a lot of times when I'm focused on the things that I want, I, I think that it creates this unrest in me, this like discontentedness. And so, so then when I'm, and, I, and it's important when I think it's, it's important to want a good life. So sometimes when I'm in this space, this space, this mental space, like, ah, I really, man, I want these things out of life, then, uh, there's maybe not the happiness there, but, um, and sometimes it goes too far where it's like, Hey man, like you've got the life you've got. So, but when I come back to, uh, you know, and so cliche, like gratitude, but really when I, when I'm in a space of, of gratitude and like reflecting on my life and I, I just got married a year and a half ago and just immensely grateful for my wife and our relationship. She's just like the biggest gift in my, in my world. So, so the simple question I would say, the simple answer, I guess it would be yes and no. Yes. No, it depends on the mental. I think there's a lot in my life that isn't, isn't the way I want it financially in my business, in my health. So I say like every area of my life I'm wanting to see become better. So there's some, like, there's some struggle there, but I would say on that happiness level, like it depends on my, um, it depends, it depends on my mind, on my frame of reference day to day. Like if I'm, if I'm living in gratitude, and thinking about how grateful I am for my wife and, and my life, I'm like, man, I, I'm I'm happy. But if I'm like, oh, this isn't working and that's not working, and rah, 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 then I'm like, I'm an unhappy camper. So I'd say both and. Yeah, I was actually just watching like I I it was like on Facebook. It was like a like a podcast video of this guy. He was like, he's like, well, should people be happy all the time? Like, is happiness something you should feel all the time? And yeah. the guy goes. Like, he goes, no, he goes, it's like, it's a, mo like a momentary thing of like, he's like, that doesn't mean that you're like sad all the time. It's like, mm -hmm. you get happy, you're happy one time maybe, but it's, it's like, not everything's going to be happy yep. with, with everything in your life. I'm like, he's like, you're going to hit some challenges. You're going to be sad sometimes. Yeah. That's like, it is what it is. Totally. <clears throat> yeah. And just like riffing on that, like. <clears throat> Yeah, like I want to live, I want to be happy. I think we all should be happy. I think like ha like happiness, like if you're happy, like that makes for a good life. But I I really like I want to live like a good life and a fulfilling life. And so I would say, I would say I'm not I'm not sad a lot. Like on the inverse, I'm like I'm not sad a lot. I'm I'm like in the in the struggle to create a better life for myself, and that comes with its own set of. Um, you know, like sometimes it, it, they're overwhelm and anxiety just from like trying to create a business and build something. So, yeah, I think like I want a fulfilling life. And I think that I think there's like a deeper level of happiness that's like deep abiding joy and fulfillment and contentedness that this is the life I wanted to create. And so so I'd say like that's that's what I'm after that, like sitting on the back porch at the end of the day as the sun is setting, you know, and there's like a quiet moment or like especially I love the the quiet mornings on a Saturday, right? Where you're sitting with your cup of coffee, the sun is rising and it's that still feeling and being alone with yourself of like, am I building a good life? And like, I want to be able to, and I'm in that process. So I want to be able to have those moments and like, be like, hey, this is, this is a good life. But um, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, I feel like even just, I always, I like to say it's like the hustle yep. of things. People, people are like, well, you're not, you're not hustling. I'm like, well, I'm like, not in the way that you're thinking. Yeah. I was like, but yes, I am. I'm like, I'm hustling to get my work done. You know, make sure things are like, you know, for my life that I want. I'm like, which comes, I, I guess, with its own set of emotions. Because sometimes, like, I'll get overly frustrated if something's not going right. 
like yeah. like it's just that frustration and and I, I like I was always told like that's not normal like that that's not supposed to happen I was like but you get frustrated it's yeah it's frustration mm-hmm. so like it's just that pure frustration yeah and I think that's I think there's like I mean I'd be curious what you think but yeah, I mean, I, I, as I think about my life, there is this, and there's this tension between becoming ungrateful and like nothing is ever good enough, which is not, it's like the weakness of the, of the gift. But I think for me, there's this, there is this just tension of like, hey, I want to, I'm growing my my finances, I'm growing my skills, I'm growing my relationships, I'm growing my business. Like, so none of this is where I currently want it to be. And so there's this tension there and it's just a part of it's a part of life i may not always be happy in the moment but i think that i'm doing the right things to move forward but i'd be curious what in your relationship with happiness and the tension of becoming more i mean like definitely like sometimes i will say like coming from like a situations like sometimes they were easily easy to bounce back and just kind of act like everything was normal but like recently they're not as easy to bounce back. And it's definitely been just like, I would say for me, a mental struggle. Cause I, one of my goals for like the, for the new year. And I had, yeah. I had kind of, I didn't write it down, but I knew what I want. Like I knew that I wanted to stay more positive and like, think about like, well, for one, like relaunching one of my businesses mm-hmm. and even, I mean, it's still, it's not like going the way I want to, Yeah, but um, like just trying to keep that positive mindset of like, okay, it's all going to work out. It's going to be yeah. fine. Um, like I will say, like, I thought it would, it was going to be easy sailing, like, yeah. but definitely like now coming towards like the middle of the year, yeah. it's, it's been like definitely a lot harder, but it's, and like in, in that moment, it was like, I'm like, I didn't like how I was feeling. Like I was, for one, I was getting sick because especially when I get overstressed. Yeah. Like, cause I have like high functioning anxiety. So like those hey. things. Akai, kindred spirit. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I was, I, I was like getting overly sick and well, people yeah. like, and I had just started a new job too, yeah. which in itself was anxiety filled. Mm-hmm. Because, like, people, I even had, like, some, like, co-workers who were, like, or at least I, I say one in particular. I don't know if he's going to watch this or not, but he, he like, yeah. it felt like he's, like, trying to, like, read it out of me. Like, because I wouldn't talk. I would I don't talk much when I'm, like, in a mindset of, like, panic. Yeah. And not so much panic, just kind of, like, that stressful mindset. But he's, like. He, he always, like, tries to tell me, because I try to keep, like, my, my full-time job separate from, like, you know, like, my comedy, writing, you yeah. know, projects, just just because, you know, like, I don't really want those to mesh and, you know, yeah. like that. And he's, like, he sees my notebook, because I write everything in a notebook, and he goes, what's that? I was, like, oh, those are my comedy jokes. He goes, oh, when are you going to tell me one? I was, like, I'm, I'm not. So... Yeah, I'm like, but I, I think like some people like, especially, I, and what I've noticed is, you kind of come from like you have had the same experiences and like, and not even the same, but like similar, I guess. Yeah. And I think he kind of knew just from similar experiences that I was like something I didn't want to talk about, mm-hmm. and I, I still haven't fully like said anything, but like I think he like they kind of knew. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, sometimes just like, I like, also there the just like boundaries and like, hey, if you don't want to share, you don't have to share. Like that's there is something wise about like likewise that my I have a a full truck. I do I'm a full truck broker, which is a whole other business. I I do I have a business that I run by day, and you know with my colleagues, yeah, I keep a lot of the stuff separate just because I'm like, yeah, I don't really need to mix the two. Um, just keep it simple. So yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Yeah, well, even even at work, he was like, like, I don't, like, especially, like, in the beginning, I wasn't very, uh, like, talking, because it was, it was at the height of, like, the, the stressful situation, where, like, really, 
Mm. I, I would say the height, it, it could, you know, that could change, but it was definitely like really stressful. I really didn't want to talk. Like I, I just, and well, like he was like, oh, I'm going to go to the store and buy something. And he's asking all the coworkers, he goes, well, what do you want? And I said, oh, I don't want anything like, you know, and he goes, and he, then he goes and asks everyone else and then turns back to me and goes, well, what do you want? So, and he ends up buying me like a Dr. Pepper and like five hours go by and he tells me, he's like, okay, well now I need to know your comedy jokes since I bought you a Dr. Pepper. I was like, that doesn't sound like a fair trade. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound like a fair trade. I'm like, I'm still not gonna, still not gonna tell you. Not happening. I'm like, I don't know you that well yet. Totally, totally. Yeah, wise. I'm like, okay, so what would you want to add to your life with a magic stick? Mm. I'm guessing that means wand. Yeah, I'm down for, yeah, the magic stick. I like that wand or what have you, little Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Uh, I would, if I could wave a magic wand, I would give myself the ability to know how to create enough value in the market to make a million dollars a year. Uh, so I wouldn't win the lottery, I, but I would want to, I would want to rapidly, I would want to instantaneously have the skill set to know how to uh, create products and services uh, that the market would want to buy that would enable me to make a million dollars a year. Cause I think that my life uh, and the, just the basic answering the money question, right? Because you and I are both, do it working because we need to have money and and so we're not fully doing the things that we totally want to do so if i could figure out if i could crack the the money code quickly which i'm working on now building skill sets studying business processes systems but if i could do that and know like instantaneously i know exactly every year how to make a million dollars i would do that yeah i think even just like i don't know i i always say like I, I want other people to be happy too. And I, I guess I was a lot of a people pleaser. Yeah. As a, I don't know, so much, not, not so much as like a child, but like, or I didn't really think of it that way, mm -hmm. but I always like wanted other people to be happy. So I like, I guess I kind of hid myself. Yeah. Which also like kind of going back to like work too. It sometimes is really hard for me to like, at least at my job to put myself out there because like when I tried to, or at least with the people I knew, when I tried to, it kind of backfired. Mm. So it was like, I don't, know, I don't like, I don't really know like how to phrase that, but it was something that was like, oh, people were like, like I remember my first job too. They, I don't know, I I thought that's like when I got my second job, I thought like how I was talked to at my first job, which wasn't very nice. Yeah. And how like you do that in the service industry. But I quickly learned that's not exactly how everyone talks. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like when I, I, I Yeah, but and also when I would say I was sick, like because yeah. I have like okay, it was diagnosed as esophagus reflex, but it could be more like and I would randomly get sick sometimes and my first job would tell me would like they just like roll their eyes. But like I'd get sick at my second job and then be like, okay, well, you need to go home. I was like, good, because I don't want to be at a job when I'm like throwing up. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone does. But that like I honestly thought that's how people were supposed to talk. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. that's not how you talk in the food industry, like or even any service job. Mm -hmm. I was like, and I don't think a lot of people realize that when I said that, like, like it was something that was like really I guess more of a mental thing and even like going to my, from my second job to like my newer job. Yeah. They, they still talk like differently than how, like, I guess from each other, like it's not the same type of environment as it was. I hope that's for the better because yeah, it sucks to work in a crappy environment. <laughs> yeah. And I think even I didn't realize it was like a crappy environment until yeah. Until I was done, I was like, oh, people don't talk like this. Yeah, it's nice to be like, oh, there's actually a better way of better way of living with people. That's nice. Uh, well, okay. What was the, when was the last time you got, you got really surprised? 
I mean, probably literally, probably just like when my wife snuck up on me or something. Uh, I, I was like to prank her. And so probably, I think she I did it accidentally, but I think in the last day or two, like, I, you know, she like quietly walked up to me and I was like, yeah, oh gosh, where'd you come from? Uh, so that was probably literally a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I actually, well, my little sister, like she, I was standing in my room and I left my door open and I was like, kind of like just, I don't know, I guess being kind of random in my room. And I was looking at the light and then all of a sudden it just turned off. I was like, how did that just turn off? And I, it scared me. And I, I look at my little sister's like, hi, Kayla. I was like, oh, I'm like, that was you that turned off my light? Yeah. I was like, why? Why did you do this? Scared me. That's amazing. Creepy. Yeah. I was like, please don't do that again. Please don't. That's amazing. Uh, does it take you long to make critical decisions? Mm. So I'm, I'm an options person. So I'm always looking at like all the options and I'm always looking at like, I'm just looking at things from like six different angles, but I would say it depends. I would say when I got married, I, I like, it just was, it was like a, definitely a process. It took me a process to decide that, Oh, this is the right this is the right thing. And I mean, I'm so grateful that, that my wife and I got married, but it was, yeah, that took, that took a bit. Um, but it depends. I think sometimes I have a strong knowing about something and I just know that this is the right thing. And other times it's a little bit slower to, to get to that. So. Yeah. I think even for me, like there's a lot of things that I, I like, I know that I shouldn't know. Like sometimes like people like, even work, I'll say with working too, like yeah. there'd be times they're like, oh, I'll be fine. I'm like, no, you won't. No, you won't. And then like 10 minutes later, they're over there like dying. <laughs> like they're like getting slimmed. And I was like, well, told you. I know. Like there's things I'm like, I already know that. Like and I, I do it to my parents too. I was like, okay, sure, sure. And All then, right. but even like, I will say with like stressful situations, like I'm like, usually like my instincts are like that. And like, I, I tell people that like, people are like, what do you mean? Like psychic abilities? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just saying their instincts. I'm like, yeah. and it's something that I'm like, I already, I just know, or I just yeah. um, comes to me. I don't know. Like, it's not like I have someone in my ear. I'm yeah. like, it's just something I know. I'm like, but with this stressful situation, it was kind of like my anxiety was so high because I wasn't sure. Yeah. Where everything was going. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's real. That's right. And I think it's like, I think it's when, when we notice that something is on point, like our instincts, uh, and, and sometimes we get separated from our instinctive knowledge. And so we have to reconnect that. But when you're like, man, my instincts are on point, 100% leaning into that. Like when you know something, trust yourself. Um, and it's hard when there's, when you're divorced from that sense where you're like oh my i can't my instincts aren't i'm not sure about this like yeah that's a stressful thing yeah i even like told people well when i was younger like i don't know if you've ever gotten this but you ever like when someone's like walking down a hallway Mm. and you can like they're not there but you can like feel their presence walking down a hallway i used to get that all the time and sometimes it would be like you know my parents walking down the hallway like go to the bathroom go to the room whatever yeah but then there were times that I would like, you would feel someone there, but there was like no one there. Really? Like I always got, I always got that as a child. Wow. And like, I don't know. Well, my, my dad took it as like, he, I don't think he knew how to deal with that because his, his thing to that was, Oh, stop watching. Like, you know, like, like criminal minds or NCIS. I'm like, that I didn't see a dead body. Yeah. I was like, that's not how that worked. I was like, I don't really watch those anyway. So, so that's, that's really, I mean, those, these types of things like, like supernatural things, uh, you know, or spiritual dynamics, spiritual intuition, those things fascinate me. So are you saying like, as a kid, you would be like in your bedroom and sometimes someone walked down the hall and you could like feel who it was. You're like, Oh, I can feel it. That's my dad. That's my sister. But you're saying other times, no one was there, but you could like feel a presence walking up and down the hall. Well, and it wasn't even so much like, oh, I know that's like my dad or that's my mom. Right. It was more of like, 
you could feel someone there and you look in the hallway and you're like, oh, it's just my dad or oh, it's just yeah. my mom. And then like there'd be times like my back would be turned. I'd be like laying in bed and you'd feel someone like walk down the hallway like and not hear anything because my parents were pretty quiet when they'd walk down the hallway. He turned and there was no one that walked past. Like my my dad would still be in the living room because he worked a lot at that point. And I was like, like he worked so much. Yeah. But like there, he would be still sitting on the couch watching TV or even sleeping on the couch. But like there would be no one there. Was it was it a uh, so was it a since we're here since we're talking about the uh, um, phenomena whatever you want to call it uh, interesting phenomena so would would there be was it a like a benevolent presence or what was so was it something that caused like an, an emotion of like peace and comfort or was it like fear or like what were the what was the emotional association well, like at the time when I because I was like probably like five or six so I at least for remembering those yeah. I really I don't think I really felt anything like I wasn't more of like oh I'm like happy or anything like that it was it was so it, it was weird like and I'm like I didn't I didn't know what that was yeah <laughs> My my mom never really told me. My dad never really like had any of those things. Like I did, at least growing up, or at least now remembering, I don't remember anyone ever having those. But I remember as I got older, and actually within the last like three ish years, mm. or maybe four. But like I remember being, I remember there was one incident. I wasn't like, I think I was like twelve, maybe eleven. But there was one incident. So I can't watch horror movies. Or at least I couldn't when I was younger. I couldn't, I could not do horror movies. But yet, for some reason, I always let people drag me into watching horror movies. And like, and I think we were watching the movie Mama, which I don't think is that bad, at least from people who watch horror movies. But I remember, like, I watched it in the daytime, so it's not like I was watching it at nighttime. But I watched it in the daytime with like some of my friends. And throughout the whole day, I was fine. Like, I wasn't, like, crying when I watched it or anything. But I was I was fine the whole day. Like, I even went to Dairy Queen, I think. And I, I was completely fine. But I got home that night, and I was, like, shaking. I couldn't stop shaking. I was, like, crying. I Because I was scared, obviously, yeah. from watching a horror movie earlier that morning. And... I don't know. It was the weirdest thing because I was like scared. And my mom, my mom didn't even know I was scared because like my, my parents aren't together. So yeah. at the time I was at my mom's and because I, I, I think I went swimming with her, I think is why I ended up back over there. Yeah. Because she wanted someone to go swimming with. But I remember like shaking so bad. I was so scared. Wow. And I, I like felt someone touch my hand. And obviously being like 11 or 12 and watching a horror movie that scared me like and I remember like crying my eyes out to my mom and she's like she's like she, she kind of like looked confused I was like if somebody touched my hand and I was like she just like had this like stunned look on her face she's like well did you think that was maybe someone trying to tell you to calm down I was like I don't know that didn't help though oh my gosh so what do you think <clears throat> what do you think those the presence of something walking in your hallway was like, what do you, if you had to shoot from the hip, like, like nothing's off limits. What do you think it was? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was probably like, you know, well, I, I always say ghosts. There's probably a more technical term. Yeah. But like, I don't even remember my mom. I think my mom had a friend. Yeah. But I don't know if that's entirely true or not, but she was like, she was like a medium. Yeah. Now I don't know exactly how her stuff worked or anything like how yeah. any of that worked for her. But I remember there was, like, one instance, like, again, like, I was reading, like, a school menu. Uh -huh. Like, because my mom, I think, was taking a nap, and I was reading a school menu. And I looked at this, um, like, off the corner of my eye, I could see this, like, thing sitting, like, it looked like a cartoon mm -hmm. next to me. And it was, like, broad daylight out, so it wasn't, like, dark outside. But it was broad daylight, and it was, like, this, like, it looked like a man, but it looked like a cartoon. Mm hmm and I remember telling my, I think I told my mom, like, after she got up, I was like, there was just something here, and it looked like a cartoon, and I'm like, and I didn't just see it once. I'm like, I saw it, like, three times. Hmm. And I think, like, I think from that moment, like, I don't think it was my mom, per se, but I think it was her boyfriend at the time. Yeah. Who had, like, their friend come over, 
and I they don't remember what she said though. Yeah. They don't remember if they if she said she saw something or not. Yeah. But I think what I remember from that conversation, all they remember, or at least at the, I think I was talking to her boyfriend at the, you know, from the time, but because I think what she had said was there was like, what she saw was a white light. Hmm. But that was it. And I'm like, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Like even now, like, you know, almost probably like over a decade later, I still don't remember what that meant. I'm like, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. The white light. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. All right. Well, I, those types of things are very fascinating to me. People's experiences with uh, the supernatural, the spiritual realm. It's fascinating. Good stuff. All right. Let's see. What's the meaning of life for you? Man, this is good. You got some, you got some solid questions there. Um, the meaning of life for me, I would say is I believe I believe that we were created for a purpose. Uh, so I believe, um, you know, you, you say, I think the word God means a lot of things to a lot of people, but I, I would say, I believe we were created for a purpose by God and that we were put on this earth to do something meaningful that only we can do. And so I would say the meaning of life for me is living out this life in connection in relationship with the like the divine, I would say God, uh, and then living in relationship and connection to the people that I love. So I'd say the meaning of life to me is living a life of love, living a life of purpose, and then using my gifts and skills to make the world a better place uh, in my own unique way. That's what I would say. Yeah, I I always think like people. I remember everyone asking me, or at least. I don't know if it was my friends or like family or whatever, but people are always like, like, you know, always talking like, why did God put you on this planet? And I always told people when I was younger, I'm going to inspire people. Like that's, that, that was my purpose. I was like, I don't know why I thought that was like, I don't, I still even like, I look back and I'm like, you know, I can see it now, but like, I don't know why I said that as a child. Oh, did you say I'm going to inspire people or expire people? inspire yeah i thought you said i thought you said expire i was like that's a really funny thing to say as a kid yes inspire yeah like, i love that there i, I don't know there I, I feel like i was that child that was like i want i want to dream big like i didn't yeah. want to do like I, I think like the most i guess log like even career wise like the most logical career i wanted mm -hmm. was probably psychology yeah like because i remember like through I think from as long as I can remember to like my freshman year of high school, I wanted, I wanted to be a singer. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, and I had, and mind you, I said I had stage fright. I don't know where I was going to put the two and two together of like, Oh yeah, I got stage fright. I'm going to be a singer. Like. I love it. I only sing in the shower. And I, I think like that was, something I was like yeah I'm like I want to do this I'm like but I, people in my life were always like well you, you need to have a more logical career I'm like well, that's yeah. not why why do I need to do that yeah logic I mean logic serves its place but I'm a big believer you got to dream big you got to go for it yeah all right let's see how do you feel before coming to this interview or how did you feel how did you feel before coming to this interview? Hmm. I think maybe, un, maybe uh, you know, uncertain because we hadn't gotten, sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're on shows, you get to connect, you know people, and other times, uh, you know, as you know, you just kind of, you just kind of go for it. So I think it felt uh, maybe some uncertainty, like, okay, how's this going to go? How, what's going to happen? So, yeah. Yeah, I even I remember, like, my first podcast, because I was like, I had been, like I, I, I tell this pe to people all the time, but I had been ghosted by like the first two people I had tried to book for, for the podcast. And it, by the way, all of it was through Facebook. I had, yeah. and I had gotten up super early in the morning because like uh, they were either one was like on the other side of the world. Yeah. 
and one was in New York, so it was like three hours ahead of here. Yeah. And um, like I had gotten up super early in the morning and heard nothing. Oh man. I was like, <laughs> I got up early. I was like, and so like my first, I remember my first podcast because I was like, is she gonna ghost me too? Yeah. Like that's what I'm worried about because like I'm like I don't know these people like I don't know yeah. who they are to be like. You know, I'd like to be like, okay, are we gonna? Am I, are you gonna ghost me again? Yeah, totally. No, totally. I'm, I'm totally with you there. All right. Let's see. One last question. All right, here we go. What are the top three work conditions that make you most productive? Ooh, that's good because that kind of what, what that would fall under is like flow, uh, which I've been studying a lot of. Like when you know when you get in the zone, you get in the flow, you create your highest quality work. Top three work conditions that, or was it top three work conditions that help me make produce or work my best? Yeah, that make you the most productive. Make me most productive. I would say, um, I would say I'm I'm productive when. So one work condition would be internal. So like a physical. So when I'm when my body is like calm and relaxed. So likewise, I kind of can get like worked up and anxious. So one would be uh, if I can go for a run. So I'll go for a run and that brings my body and my mind like, and I'm like, I get really calm. So I'll go for a run that helps create a calm internal work condition. Um, and then I would say another work condition that is subjective to me would just be uh, curiosity and fascination. So when I'm doing something and my mind and body are physically calm, and then I'm like fascinated and curious by what I'm working on. And then I would say uh, probably, probably both like no distractions and a healthy amount of pressure, not too much pressure, but if there's gotta be some sense of urgency, you know, some sense of like the work that has to be done is, is meaningful and needs to get done. Otherwise I get so distracted. So uh, a healthy amount of pressure that helps and then reduces distractions and helps me focus. So I would say, Going for a run for a calm body, um, being curious about it, and then and then a level of focus uh, without distraction. Yeah, I would always say like, and coming from like a, a management standpoint, like work productive, like it's. I would I always say keep it positive. Yep. Like if you see your people are stressed, your customers are gonna be. Yeah. Are gonna see that. So. Mm -hmm. I'm like that's if if you stress if you're stressing out your team. Your, your, your customers are going to feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Positivity. Yeah. And, and, and I think positive energy when I'm talking about, yeah, working in a team for sure, like no negativity, like good positive energy and no, not, none of the blame game when people are collaborating and not trying to throw each other in the bus. Uh, those are big teamwork elements. Yeah. Uh, that's all the questions I got for you today. Amazing. I know it doesn't feel like any, a lot of questions, but like, I will say like, you know, 15 questions or even, I think, I think it was like tw over 20 makes it yeah. makes, you know, episodes go for a long time. I learned that oh. when I did like my first episode. Oh my God. It was like over an hour. I was staring at my computer. I was like my eyes. No, you, I mean, I'm impressed. You, you ripped through 20 questions. Like, wow, Kayla is, she's ready to rock and roll. So Thanks for ha having me on the show. Like, thanks for being a gracious host. <laughs> Welcoming onto the Kayla Medler show. What do you have? A, I, I forget. What was that? Do you have a? It's the podcast is actually called Reinvented. Because yes. so I will I will say like I don't know, people know this one. Um, I had I had like another podcast. Like I think it was. I'm gonna. I might butcher the name, but I think it's like tired but comedy, and it was like I I feel like it was just like kind of like the dumbest thing like i don't i it, it, it had it was a great idea but like yeah. was executed well and i just kind of gave up on it um so yeah i guess if anyone's watching this you know you want to go see that it I I, it. I don't, it, there wasn't any video but it was like all audio but uh i love it it, well, I it definitely it. wasn't uh, my favorite thing but i definitely <laughs> want something more mental health like related and the person yeah. behind so oh, come on 
That's awesome. Reinvented. Well, uh, it's an honor to be on Reinvented. And uh, if you ever need a, an outro, you know, I could always do the uh, the voiceover for the outro. Like, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining, joining Kayla Medler on Reinvented. Remember, you can always reinvent yourself. I don't know. We'll think about something. something. <laughs> I'm going to check you up on that. Yeah, done and done. Well, thanks so much for being a gracious host. I had a blast, Kayla. Thank you for being on the show. Woo! All right. Oh.